Welcome to Bible 180, Daniel. Daniel is a smart, handsome, and capable exile, and so he's pressed into government service for the Babylonians. Daniel and his buddies Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego don't want to eat the non-kosher food offered by the government. After receiving permission, they eat only fruit and vegetables, and they end up better than their fellow students. The king of Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar, has a nightmare. He wants his court seers to interpret for him, but first, he wants them to prove they're not fakes by telling him what his dream was. Otherwise, he'll kill them. Only Daniel can do it. It's a giant statue with a golden head, silver chest, bronze bronze core, iron legs, and iron slash clay feet. A giant boulder from heaven smashes the statue and becomes a mountain. The statue is the different kingdoms of the earth, the boulder, God's eternal kingdom in Christ. Impressed, the king promotes Daniel. Neb builds a giant idol which everyone must bow down before. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will not. The king throws them into a fiery furnace, but they are unharmed, walking around with another godlike figure. They give glory to God, and Neb does likewise. Neb has another dream of a majestic tree. It's cut down and bound in iron fetters. Daniel says it's about Neb's so repent. Otherwise, he'll be humbled. The king forgets and becomes arrogant. So God drives Nebuchadnezzar into the out of the palace to eat grass and become like a beast for a time. He returns humbled and glorifies God. A brazen and foolish king arises in Babylon. He uses Jerusalem's temple vessels at his obscene party and the handwriting is on the wall. Daniel tells Babylon they've been weighed in the balance and found wanting and now they'll be punished. That very night, Babylon is captured by the Persian Empire. Darius, a Persian king, is enticed by Daniel's haters to make a law that those who won't pray to Darius be thrown into a lion's den. Daniel survives. Darius rejoices and he promotes Daniel. Daniel keeps helping kings face problems bigger than they are. Daniel manages to be faithful not only to his employers, but more importantly, to Yahweh. The rest of the book is about Daniel's own dream. First, four beasts come out of the sea. One, a lion eagle, then a bear, a leopard bird, and a terrible beast with teeth and ten horns. One of these horns becomes great and boastful. Then, the one like the Son of Man overthrows all the beasts and is given power, authority, and dominion over all peoples and nations. These are the nations of the world, ending with Rome, but God's own Son of Man will overthrow them and set up an everlasting kingdom for his people. Next dream, a ram rules over the earth, but a goat comes and defeats it. At the height of its power, the goat's horn falls off and four smaller horns take its place. One wicked horn desecrates the temple at Jerusalem. This is about Alexander the Great and Antiochus Epiphanes IV, who would desecrate the temple. Another later vision describes kings of the north and the south and war, and it's describing in greater detail the same events. Daniel responds by repenting for the nation and praying, O Lord, listen, forgive, act for your name's sake. Gabriel and then an awe-inspiring God-like figure appear before Daniel to explain the dreams, and they comfort Daniel, showing him that God's power and might are even greater than these frightening visions and interpretations. Daniel will not fully understand these visions or the timing because it's all the Lord's. It's going to get worse, though, before it gets better, yet God's got a plan. All the powerful and wicked things that go on only highlight God's goodness, power, and great deliverance.